Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. G'day guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg and we're in the car again. Uh, you know, I I can't keep picking up games guys. This 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 is definitely the last game for a little while. And um, you know I, I, I did manage to move around the theatre and I've got some more room. I wasn't supposed to fill it straight away, but I did make some more room. We'll see that in another video. Um, and, uh, you know, I was doing that to get the Space Invaders inside, not to go out straight away and then buy another game. You know my grail list for those that have watched some of the previous videos. You know the games that I'm after. And if those ones come up, you know, I, I, I do want to seriously look at them, right? But. A, I wasn't really expecting anything like that to come up. And B, I still want to be really picky about about that going forward. Like, it would have to be, you know, a really good deal and it just have to make a lot of sense, guys. Um, otherwise, I'm just, just, yeah, not <laughs> not really in a position to be, to be grabbing these so quickly one after the other. However, having said all that, and out of all those Grail games, guys, that I've gone through before, I mean, obviously, I've picked up a Space Invaders now, so that's cool. But even, like, Outrun, Pole Position, all that, I reckon if one of those came up right right now, um, I, I wouldn't. I'd pass on it. I'd pass on it. And there's a number of reasons for that, which I'll go into at a different time. But the only game, I think, if it came up, that I would... Still have to do that goes my phone falling off <laughs> the car so the gps um that's useful uh the only thing that uh, that would make me think twice is is a a color color vector because because they're just so rare they just don't come up at all and you know color tempest you know and would and it would need to be a working monitor although we do have someone locally here in perth who's pretty good at um fixing vector monitors and so forth so maybe broken um, I would be interested but yeah color vector working tempest oh god I have to <laughs> I'd have to I'd have to pull some things some strings and try and make that work somehow god knows how but that's the only one guys that's it otherwise I'm stopping here and got to just work on the games that I've got fix up the issues that I have with some of those because that's really those projects are still building even though I'm you know slowly chipping away at them at the same time it is bothering me and this game that we're picking up today is another project so that's not great now how am I going to get my phone here just hang on a sec <laughs> okay I'm back scrambling around right um where, where was I even talking about? <laughs> so, anyway, so this this game, what, what are we picking up? Well, there was a game on my grail list that I actually sort of, I, I crossed off in my mind. Um, it was one of the first ones, probably. I mean, you know, Spaceys and, and all that is, um, you know, they're, they're still, you know, they were still the, 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 the top, grail games that I wanted to get um, but there was one but I thought I'm just not going to be able to get it and I, and I look I did look I looked for for a couple of years <laughs> and one never came up and I'm referring to the game that someone else put a put an ad in saying they wanted one and that ad was in the in Gumtree for over a year um, and I'm not sure if they ever picked one up either and the game I'm talking about is Atari Super Sprint. Now as you guys know I already own a championship sprint so why, why should I be interested in Super Sprint? Well as I said the, the first the first 
really major grail game was really the super sprint version because of ha having the three three players um, and yeah I, I, that was the one I wanted but it's a huge machine as well but I couldn't see them come up and that's why you know when the championship sprint came up I was really happy with that and um, and and you know and to be honest that's that satisfied you know that initial need for that game but i really wanted the three players guys i really did i really well i still do which is why i'm getting this one now if you did watch the space invaders pick up you'll know that i um you know was extremely surprised when i walked through the door to pick up the space invaders that uh dan had um, had a super sprint <laughs> i was just like oh my god blown away to see one just randomly on a on a pickup for another game so yeah i obviously after i left uh with the spaces i contacted dan again um because he did sort of indicate that he would potentially sell it if there was other people interested in it and i just asked him you know because it was not it's not working um he thinks there's some you know there's something wrong with the processor or something but um who knows and uh, I said, well, how much would you let it go for? Just, you know, <laughs> not working. So he gave me a price and, um, you know, it's reasonable. It's reasonable, guys. And so, so here we are <laughs> on our way to, to, to pick it up. And, you know, it's not working. It's got a few other issues too, because I remember when I took the, the film last time of the machine, um, it, doesn't have all the right steering wheels the middle steering wheel is not the correct one and also it um, it's got some strange boxing going on around some of the controls like the left hand control and the right hand control which is not standard the middle one looks normal the the, the surround around the the steering wheel but the other ones are definitely been added after market now those those wheels get punished badly and can break and um, you know an operator sometimes do some weird and wonderful things to try and make them stronger and it looks like an operator at some point had sort of boxed these in and made a more stable base I'm sort of hoping that it can be removed and the original box is underneath but I'm not holding out for that um, so the only sh a shame with that is that that control panel has sort of been modified and may not be able to be sort of returned back to, to original so that's a bit disappointing but Everything else seems complete, seems pretty clean, and you know, as I said, you can't really be too fussy uh, with these because they really, really don't come up. But listen, guys, I'm actually running a bit, a bit late. Um, I've just got to pick up a little bit of cash. I've just stopped to, to do that, and then we've got to get there. But we're because I'm running late. We're, I won't film again at Dan's because we filmed last time when we were there. Um, so you'll hear back from me once we get this loaded into the car, and I'll tell you what, how we how we're going to do that. Because I'm actually not quite sure, but. <laughs> Anyway, back soon, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, guys, we, we picked it up, and um, that was tough. I was just bringing up the weather. Jeez, it feels hotter than that. 32 degrees. But, jeez, kicking the temperature kicking off the pavement. It was just like a reflective oven. <sighs> Anyway, we have got it in the car. Um, again, I didn't want to, you know, set up the camera again in Dan's house, but um, again, very gracious, extremely helpful. Um, gave me some extra uh, chips that he's been, you know, trying to test the game to try and get it working. One of the processes, the legs have come off, and uh, mainly because there it was a processor with gold gold legs on it and really soft and brittle and they've just snapped off so but he was saying that it sort of was half working um, I'm sure he said it sort of went for you know a few hours and then would go funny or it would start there'd be no sound or he did something else and there was sound and there was no, and there was no picture or, <laughs> so I don't know we um, we don't really know what we did do though guys is that uh, check in the manual I'll put up the weight on the screen I'm sure it was 130 
160 k's was it? It's a huge amount of weight and you know it doesn't matter if you've got two people through. I mean it's just awkward, awkward dead weight that. So even though the monitor has this cool sliding mechanism you can slide it up and then it allows you to get it through doorways. I'd still hate to get that entire machine through a doorway with the with the monitor head on so it was it was easy enough to just find the the RGB connections and the power connections to the monitor just unclip those and then there was just two extra bolts underneath the head unit there was two there that allowed it to slide you just take those two out and then there's an extra two we took out um, to take the, the, the whole head unit off and that was so much easier um, you know lift the head unit out easy it's in the back of my car here and then the base you know, we've cut the machine in half effectively. The base still, still pretty big, still pretty heavy, um, but basically, you know, about as heavy as a yeah, maybe my tight Taito Taito um, Defender Cap, the red one. You know, um, a little, you know, obviously a little bit shorter. So, anyway, <laughs> so, you know, initially it's very imposing. If <laughs> you think, how the hell am I going to get this uh, moved and back into? Uh, the theatre and the interesting thing is because I've measured this machine guys and it was 110 I think now, 110 though it didn't say exactly if that was 110 right out to the width of the steering wheels because the steering wheels sort of come out a little bit we took those off too by the way so that was another whole panel of about I don't know 5 10 k's um, worth of weight right there and yeah so I don't know if that 110 it includes the edges of the steering wheels which of course are forward so I've got a space guys that's about 105 at the back with it where my pin next to the pimple machine so where the um, uh, the Tato red cabinet used to be and, I, and, and there was always extra space there like I've noticed that there's been extra space and I thought well hang on if I could just squeeze this guy into that same spot and I've moved the, the red tater somewhere else then it just maximizes that space it means that I've used that entire width up into the um, the world rally machine um, so I'm, I'm hopeful I'm hopeful it better fit there it doesn't fit there oh my god I have to change everything around again guys those little things on the control panel um they don't, actually didn't look as big as i thought they were the aftermarket stuff didn't look as bad as i thought they were in the initial video so that was interesting uh, but they definitely are seem to be bolted on their sort of separate aftermarket so we'll have to check that out um but yeah it, it was hot <laughs> it was hot moving that my god and we've got to get it in the other end it's going to be just as hot so uh, anyway guys let's head back to the theatre and get her inside at least to the location you know uh, there's not going to be any fixing of PCBs or even really testing it today I know it's not working I really need to you know spend a, a long time really going over the board and seeing what chip should be in there and what shouldn't be in there and checking all the cabling and so I think today we just get it into place and, uh, and that'll be it. This is the next day. I'm a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit more switched on, and we can get focused back on the machine. So I want to show you the machine. Let's see the condition of it and what needs to be done to get this thing going. So overall, the cabinet is pretty solid. It's got definitely some wear, and you sort of expect that for this game. This is a game that's always going to be beaten up. There's not many around. They're pretty rare, so finding one in mint condition is usually next to impossible. Just finding one is hard enough. But there's a few interesting things about this particular cabinet. First of all, guys, it is an LAI cabinet. It's not a genuine Atari cabinet. Now, the good thing is, is it looks like LAI on this occasion, unlike the championship sprint, which is a bit different, in terms of the cabinet design but on this one they've actually kept true to the original Atari design well that's what it seems of course remember our good friend APB the LAI cabinet next door there obviously converted since but uh, as we found out the control panel for that one was half a uh, it was a half an inch no I think it was just a centimeter too big 
the original Atari one won't fit on the LAI. They just made the cabinet slightly smaller. So, I don't know, did they make this one slightly different in terms of size? It looks pretty much a one-to-one -to, -one to me. That's a good thing. It's all plywood as well, which is great. So it's really, really solid. And, you know, it's got some scuffs and, you know, normal sort of age marks and so forth but it's not too bad guys it's not you know there's not huge scratches anyway at where this hasn't been cleaned up at all so a bit of a clean it's going to help as well so yeah the graphics aren't too bad but when we get to the steering wheels here something really strange is going on here <laughs> something really odd is going on and first of all of course all the steering wheels uh we've got some quite severe rust and they all unfortunately suffer from this sort of rusting um, hopefully a lot of its surface rust normally when it gets down into the bottom here it's really pitted away the chrome um, in fact this particular one looks like it's been tried to be cleaned and so therefore there's you know there's still some pitting under there I can definitely get it better than that I can certainly take that surface rust off the back here this particular wheel will come off and be replaced anyway because it's the wrong one this these ones with the punch holes that's for a different game uh, so it should be these ones with the without the holes similar sort of um, steering wheel though in a other respects and um, yeah this one here same sort of thing in terms of the rust now they all sort of have a relatively good spin which is good it means most of the internals are probably Okay, this last one here has got a wobble. And I'm not sure if that is because the outside is bent or more than likely where this is connected. I think might you I think there's some movement if I remember rightly. So if you don't stick it down dead center, it's not gonna spin properly, I think. Um but anyway, uh, I, I have at least one replacement wheel for this. I think I've actually got another one um, which came off, uh, which is sitting on the APB panel, which was supposed to go on there until I found out it couldn't fit. So anyway, I think I've got some ways of fixing that. But that's not the curious thing. Oh, and by the way, these things at the back here are always busted up. So it looks like these are all good. Now, they may not be the genuine article, I found that like on the championship sprint ones I've got is like metal and the other ones plastic original and you know, there seem to be so many different modifications have been done to these because they keep breaking the original Atari ones just break um, just plastic and they just get force on them and they break away but yeah the obvious thing here which I mentioned earlier in the car is this whole thing here this is not original like the Atari one would be and the curious thing is is that the original one that's like the Atari one well it effectively is exactly the same shape as this one here but it is you can see this one's just screwed in on the top of the plate and that shouldn't be the case this should be molded or at least you know fitted from the underside and and um, fitted firmly from there without any screws on the top and you can see on the corner of this this is all busted all four corners and it, to me it almost looks like this has been forced out of another panel maybe even a championship sprint you know the two-player one taken out and then some holes made and drilled through the top which I don't know that just that seems bizarre to me guys and then even more strange is I thought you know that this these where it says blue and blue car and yellow car on the other one here I thought that was just like a sticker or something that someone had put on there because again this is not part of the original however this is actually recessed and this is actually a separate plate here where this has actually been, you know, pressed out the wording and, and painted professionally in there, and it looks like a sticker, like it looks like there's a something on the outside here, but 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 it's not. It's actually painted, and you can get your finger and get you know get an impression in there. Um, so that's not coming off. Uh, the only way to get that off would be either to paint over it, and you'd still see the impression, or take this whole plate 
off, but then, you know, how is this all being held in? I think this has all been fabricated specifically to do this, and it seems like, you know, quite a bit of time. I mean, you know, why do, do all this? I mean, this wasn't part of the standard design. Um, it's not on the middle one. <laughs> I'm really confused, guys. I really don't know why they did that. And, of course, the box is different. Now, the other big problem with it, though, you know, aesthetically it doesn't look, you know, that crash hot. But you may notice, look at the steering wheel angles here. So the, the standard Atari one is slightly, you know, the angle was like this. But the, these boxes are more upright. So when you're playing it, it's got a whole different sort of, feel, not a huge difference, but it's still got a different feel to this middle one, which is, you know, slightly lifted up. So, yeah, it's a bit of a, um, a bit of a problem because, you know, to be perfectly honest, I'd really like to get this back to stock, but I don't think I can do that uh, without getting a whole new panel, really, because, as I said, even this isn't right. You know, the other panels I've seen details of, they're not screwed in on top, even with the original component. They're fitted in from behind. So, I don't know, is this because this is an LAI cab and they did it differently? Was there supposed to be three lots of these? on here maybe the middle one got busted and then someone got an old championship sprint replacement i mean the the interesting thing is that this wheel is also different so you know maybe this whole thing was busted and then it was repl i don't know guys <laughs> there's, some, there's some history here there's some history that's gone on with this so i'm gonna have to have a bit of a think about that and see what i can do to try and hopefully get it back to some sense of normality, but I'm not sure what, what I'm gonna do there. The speaker grill area looks all relatively fine. There's nothing there to really worry about. Um, no rust or anything, which is great. The main screen area, and this is an interesting thing. First of all, the marquee. There's just one little, little um, cut there on the marquee. The rest of the marquee looks to be in great condition. The Perspex in front, it's got a few scratches. I think once the monitor is running, uh, it should be fine. Um, so yeah, and the paint, you know, needs a little bit of, uh, needs a little bit of touch up paint around the edges. But other than that, it's relatively good. Now, the big surprise with the monitor, I really thought every time I look at this game, I really thought that 19 inch monitor is too small. And of course there are, some people that change it over and swap in a 25 and sort of stuff around with the the uh, marquee to make it sort of fit there is actually a super sprint deluxe version either an italian or one in ireland i think and that one there actually was produced as a deluxe with a 25 inch screen in it um, with a different sort of marquee around it how bizarre is that so you know sort of the parts catalog actually they talk about um, some different parts for the Ireland one, which is really unusual. <laughs> you know, why Ireland? I don't know. Um, in fact, and they've got a control panel which actually comes up and meets the top here and comes down flat like that. Whereas all the USA ones are like this, of course. And uh, yeah, as I said, in other respects, this LAI one seems to be pretty much true to the original. Now on the side we have uh, some side art, it's got, uh, look, let's see that, just past the pinball machine there, but um, it's not too bad, it's got a few little cuts and bits and pieces, but it's not too bad. Uh, on the other side, however, it is completely missing, but of course where it's located right now, can't even see that side, so that's not a problem. So yeah, so... Um, that's really it from a cabinet point of view. Let's put this uh, back up on the tripod and let's just talk about uh, getting this game working. Right, so I can't show you the board set that's in the back, but it is co absolutely complete in terms of the board set is there. You can't see it from the front. Oh, and by the way, you know, when can we pack this down? And this is something, guys, you just got to watch out for when you're picking up games and it's hot and everyone's, you know, like bothered from moving stuff and taking stuff apart and, you know, you're not thinking clearly. But down the bottom, the coin, the big metal coin box, we didn't check and it was just loose in there. 
Now, fortunately, the whole PCB is around the back. It's a piece of wood separating the two, so there were you know, really no damage there. But when we lay it down on the trailer, effectively that was moving around. It could have hit the um, coin counter and stuff, which is in there. Doesn't look like there's any damage, but uh, anyway, watch out, watch out for those things. Never assume, you know, um, that someone else is, you know, you know, made sure that everything's tied down inside. Make sure you check yourself. And the other thing too, guys, is um, which tripped me up a little, bit, a little bit when we put this back together. It's always good if you are taking something apart to take away, take it apart yourself. Okay, undo everything yourself because that's the only real way that you, you know, when you go and put it back together. If you've taken it apart, you'll know how to put it together. Um, I was, we were stuffing around with the screws, we couldn't tell which one was which because I didn't actually take out some of those screws when we took it apart. So just something to look out for guys. Uh, now, so back to this PCB. Now, I sort of again got a bit of sort of cryptic information I guess from, from Dan. I wasn't really following what he was saying. It seems like a bit of a history in terms of the game and, and its working status. Now, apparently it, it has been working over the lifetime that he's had it. Uh, and then for whatever reason it developed some problems but what is confusing me a little bit is that I mean he's given me a whole load of chips you know to go with it here um, and I believe these are a lot of these are related to the sound and he did mention how he was getting sound and no video and then in, then he mentioned he was getting video and no sound and <laughs> but the biggest problem he mentioned was about the main processor and in fact on the first day I saw it, this was the first thing that he was talking about and he said he thought he had a problem with the processor. Now I don't know if he, he thought he had a problem with the processor before he started taking it apart, but when he took the processor apart, or took the processor out, and I, you know, I think he was taking it out to clean it or something, the legs on there you can see are broken. Okay, so yeah, that's obviously needs to be replaced. The problem is this particular processor is a um, DEC, it's a Digital Electrical Corporation, 310ES, which was a 10 megahertz processor also used in the old PDP-11 um, mini computers back in the day. And Atari used those in their System 2 machines like the Super Sprint. They had gold pins on them, uh, with real gold so the so big problem with those is that they would often get melted down for the gold so <laughs> they get destroyed so there's not actually a lot of these chips around so i didn't have a really good look at the pcb to see i'm pretty sure effectively this was the only one he had so i don't think there is a replacement in there and he was i think looking for another there are ways of repairing this you can you know get some legs and get them soldered on here it's a bit of a tricky business and of course if it doesn't work then is it the chip or is it something else you just start introducing other issues into the equation you could jump a you know solder wire from the leg straight you know onto the circuit board then you're starting to sort of stuff up the circuit board so Again, it's something I need to think about. Uh, I need to have a really good look at the PCB and just see if that's the only real major chip that's missing. If it is, maybe I'll just try and source another one of these with some good legs um, and, and go from there and start the testing process. So who knows? <laughs> who knows what we have in store there? I'm again a little bit concerned that we've got all these other chips here and you know, I don't know what's gone in and out. Um, but we just have to go through a process of trying and see, trial and error. Uh, a few other things he gave me, which was pretty cool, an original um, tax invoice he's, he's got here uh, from 2001. So yeah, 600 and $16 is what he paid for the machine at auction, uh, which was a pretty a damn good deal. By the way, I did find also um, five 20 cent pieces, so there was a dollar in there. So Dan, you gave me a, a discount of a buck. I didn't realize the dollar was still in the bottom. It was because we didn't check that, <laughs> that uh, the coin door and the tray. So the coin box, um, he gave me this, which was the sort of original auction flyer uh, where he picked up the game. And it's, it's quite interesting because it's got just a whole, whole list of um, of games that were on, on sale there. 
and I'll, I'll just just pop that up for those that that might be interested to sort of see you can freeze frame and uh, and see the sorts of machines I mean all these machines were available uh, at the auction unfortunately no prices were written down that would have been really really interesting to see how much all of these went for but a huge amount of pinballs and uh, arcade machines and back glasses um, and other bits and pieces there so if you're interested to see what was available in Perth at the Perth um, uh, Claremont show, showgrounds at the time back in 2001 then you can have a, a bit of a look at, at those there was even a theater of magic pinball going <laughs> Duke Spacey's Pac-Man Galaga 1942 wow a whole lot of cool stuff of course hopefully all this stuff is still floating around Perth somewhere and uh, some of it may come up for sale again I guess in the future so yeah anyway um, that's all we are going to talk about on the machine itself what I think we're going to do let's head over to the main machine let's fire up the game there so we can't fire it up here let's have a little bit of a chat about the game itself right so the first thing you'll notice and if you've seen the championship sprint and of course I've got one over there a real one of course the, the whole game is effectively the same. I mean, Super Sprint came out first, Champion Sprint came out, I think, within the year or at the end of the year. And, you know, this was obviously the three-player version. Champion Sprint, Championship Sprint was the two-player cabinet version. And what they did do is they did change the tracks. But, I mean, this whole graphics, even for the front, is exactly the same as Championship Sprint. This is the same in terms of the leaderboard. And as far as I can tell in terms of the gameplay itself, everything is pretty much the same. This track is obviously different with these jumps. We don't get that in Championship Sprint. All the text is the same though. So yeah, guys, it's really, really similar to the other one. And quite frankly, I'll probably find, um, well, I will find, because it's a System 2 game as well, the that particular chip I could probably swap over to the other board. However, I want to be really careful about that because of those gold legs I could easily damage the one in my existing championship sprint so I don't want to do that so anyway let's have a um, a quick uh, quick go of this I've got this set up in main with this little steering wheel now the only uh, difference in terms of tracks this one's the same in, ch in championship sprint all these other ones are different okay so that's definitely a big difference between the two games and uh, other than that though, it really is the same sort of game. And for some reason when I start in MAME, even though I've set up the coin buttons to be different, it starts with the red player as well, but anyway, let's go past there. And, uh, and of course it's a bit difficult with this, with a little spinner and this little wheel. I mean, a big part of the game, of course, is to have the cool steering wheel and to spin it around. As I keep saying when I'm talking about Championship Sprint, Oh, I could go back and get that little uh, spanner that gives you power-ups and stuff later. Um, need three or four of those, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, like, yeah, effectively the game is pretty much the same game. Um, not really much different, but of course the big thing is three players at once. That's where the fun is really going to start. Look at this graphics here guys, exactly the same as Championship Sprint. Even the sound is ex exactly the same. I actually thought the um, the sound was different, but all this sound here, the screen, it's just exactly the same. It really is like they just, you know, just changed the tracks and allowed, whoops, and allowed um, input for an extra player. And that might be the only real difference between the, the two games. Even the sound is the same. There's nothing going on there with the sound that's any different. Wow, that was pretty bad. Um, not the best uh, <laughs> control to, to use. You really need the big wheel. That little spanner, not that I'm going to make it. Oops. Whoa. So yeah, pretty much got uh, destroyed there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, well I think we've probably seen enough of that, as I said, very much the same as Championship Sprint, it's the three players that's going to really make this game though, so let's finish up. And there we have it guys, at the end of another video, I hope you enjoyed this one, what a 
oh, so good to have this really the big grail game before I struck it off the list because I thought I'd never be able to get one but fantastic to have one great that it fits here because that means I'm just not wasting any more space I'm so pleased about that as well clearly we've got heaps to do about this control panel that is a bit of a concern but I'll figure something out and uh, of course we need to get the guy going and I'm um, going to be pretty happy with that. And then down the track, I will actually look at um, potentially having a, you know, a PC in here. I will keep it all original, so you'll be able to sw swap back to the original board set. I want to make sure that it, that's all maintained in there. But then also have the ability to just have a, a PC, be able to swap that across, and then be able to play a lot of other driving games. Because having this set up with the three wheels and the centre one being dead centre with the monitor, perfect for playing you know games like pole position and stuff like that so this could end up serving a bit of a, a multi-cab purpose without you know destroying anything else everything else will stay obviously the same so that's down the track though I think I'd really like to just get it going as a super sprint that's definitely the short-term goal that longer term goal was way in the future, I think, at this stage, given all the other projects that are going on. So anyway, guys, um, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thank you, guys, uh, for those that have subscribed already and are joining the journey. Um, make sure that you fix all your games, of course, in your own environment and play those games. That's the thing. We do all this fixing, right? You've got to play. Enjoy the games. Look after yourself. And uh, until next time, Ciao for now. You must continue. You can do it. You are amazing. The theater is now closed.